the third segment of the lectures on feminist ethics. And in this uh, segment, I'm going to talk about the feminist ethic of care. There's at least two types of feminisms. There's many, really, but uh, for our purposes, there, there's two. There's justice-based feminist thinking, which just simply claims that the interests and rights of men and women should be given the same consideration as those of men. Um, this is the reasoning behind um, structural uh, equality of opportunity. The idea that you know you have to pay attention to um, characteristics maybe of men and women, but you have to treat them somehow, um, if not the same, but with you know just give them equal consideration. Uh, there's something I'm going to call an identity-based feminism, which claims that there's um, that there's morally relevant um, differences, maybe biological, maybe cultural, maybe upbringing, whatever, nurture, maybe nature, um, that and between men and women, and these uh, differences create a different and alternative perspective in ethics. This is the ethics of care. The in particular, men, women are mothers and men. Um, aren't, and that this gives them a special insight into how to care for others. This is a more radical view of uh, feminism. This one we might call uh, liberal feminism, but this is a more radical, a more radical view because it says we should re rethink um, ethics and not do, maybe not do it the way uh, that men have been doing it for the last uh, three to two thousand years. Suggestion is that there's such thing as an ethics of care, which is based on those special caring relationships, uh, like that of mother and child, um, where people make attachments, emotional attachments to particular people. The concern here is not with um, domination and subordination, because there's definitely a relation between the, the relationship between mother and child is one of subordination. Mothers are simply much, much more powerful than tiny children, and so we have un, a situation of unequal, uh, unequal power. The, um, but that, even though there's unequal power, that doesn't mean that the interests of the child are subordinated because the mother has empathy for the child's concerns and acts in the interests of the, of the child. So there's unequal power. But there's not really um, there's not there's unequal power between. But there's not really subordination involved. So what are the components of this uh, this ethics of care? Well, there's three that I shall identify following uh, Kimlicka. There's um, an emphasis on moral perception. There's an emphasis on relationships, and there's an emphasis on particular individuals involved here. Um, so. I'm going to try and illustrate this with a little uh, case study, the, uh, the toy store thieves. Um, two of them, Tina, who's newly hired, she's had many sales jobs in the past, she's not very helpful, and she steals some toys to, uh, from the toy store to sell at the weekend flea market. Vera is a long-term employee, she's been always helpful, she's a low-income single mother, and she steals a, child for her, a toy for her child's birthday present. And she actually intends to pay for the toy, pay back for the toy. Both are caught by the manager. What should the manager do? Well, a caring manager will um, have a certain different way of looking at the situation than what we might call a fair-minded manager. The moral perception of the caring manager will have a certain sensitivity to the needs of others and the relationships with them and to the context and to the particular individuals who are involved, to the particular individuals who are involved, not just the fact that they're both human beings with able to make uh, um, ethical decisions, not just that they're moral agents, but that they're actually real people. You could maybe put the difference that way. There's um, fem uh, The feminist ethic of care pays attention to real people, not moral agents not just or not just moral agents and it, this requires the cultivation of certain virtues uh, ver certain dispositions certain character traits sensitivity discernment and so on this is a sensitivity this is a, in effect why it's it's a sort of an identity theory because it talks about how a person should be right what sort of person should should a um, person be so what goes on in the toy store case 
uh, well, the fair-minded manager is just going to see these as two more relations, two competent adults who have chosen to steal and punish them accordingly. The caring manager, on the other hand, is going to pay attention to the, the different characters of the two women. It's going to pay attention to the different contexts of their lives and to their different relationships to the business. This doesn't mean that the, you know, the caring manager is always going to let Vera off and always going to fire Tina, but it, 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 it's, the caring manager is going to pay attention to these, these details in her decision about how to treat Tina and Vera. The second aspect of an ethic of care is a concern for uh, responsibilities to others and a concern for the quality of relationships, not just focused on justice and rights, but on responsibilities and relationships. Again, uh, the fair-minded manager is going to treat Tina and Vera as just being responsible for themselves and they're not going to take responsibility, right? They, they, they chose to do it. That's their responsibility. He would, and the fair-minded manager would regard any relationship to Vera as some form of partiality. It, wouldn't, it would be unfair to, be par, uh, to um, take into account a long-term relationship to Vera. The caring manager, on the other hand, is going to recognize these different relationships. Uh, Tina's a short-term employee, Vera's been with the company a long time, and she, the caring manager is going to take some responsibility uh, for Vera's life and the quality of her relationship to the firm. Third aspect is this emphasis on particularistic moral reasoning, and it's, it emerges from the other uh, views. It's um, it involves the cultivation and application of wisdom and caring to particular real human beings. It's not the application of principles to uh, abstract moral agents or the calculation of the utilities of um, rational maximizers or it's not even the cultivation of the virtues of fairness and impartiality as they're normally understood. It's the virtues of wisdom and caring, different sorts of virtues than in virtue ethics, uh, to particular people that um, perhaps uh, in this case justice is not blind, but pay attention to the particular people and to their particular relationships to, to those um, individuals. So again, um, the fair-minded manager is going to see Tina and Vera just as people who have made wrong choices and treat them accordingly, treat all cases, treat like cases alike, treat them, see the cases as being the same, apply impartial justice reasoning, stealing is an infringement of the firm's property rights and should be punished in an impartial and fair way. The caring manager is going to see the two human beings, Tina and Vera, differently. They have different characters, there's different contexts in their lives, they're different people, not abstract moral agents, they're different actual people. And she's going to, the caring manager is going to take some responsibility for Vera and Vera and the relationship of the firm to uh, to Vera, she's um, going to the caring manager is going to be less worried about uh, impartiality, property rights, and all those things, but in trying to exercise some wise and caring um, judgment in the case, as opposed to just being impartial and fair. Okay, with that behind you. Uh, tell me which of the following is the best example of good moral perception within an ethic of care. Stop the video and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I hope you've uh, committed yourself here to one of these answers. Moral, per Good moral perception, best example, an ethic of care. Sensitivity to people's common humanity. Well, that's common humanity is not their individuality, it's their abstract nature as, say, moral agents. This is not uh, good moral perception. That's the, per that's the way, uh, basically, I've been uh, asking you to think about people up to this point in the course. Uh, think of them as moral agents. Um, sensitivity to people as individuals in the abstract? No, not abstract. In the particular, in the context, in the, in the context of their lives as real people, not abstract people. Sensitivity to relationships with concrete, real others. Yeah, that's the sort of thing that moral perception involves. 
it's not just sensitivity to the equal rights of women. That would be sort of a liberal feminist idea. Yes, it's important. It should be sensitive to the equal rights of women. But the, what's really needed for an ethic of care is a sensitivity to relationships with real, concrete other people. All right. I will um, see you for the last segment of the feminism lectures in a short while.